2 John 1 6 and this is love that we walk according to his commandments this is the commandment just as you have heard from the beginning so that you should walk in it hi you guys and welcome thank you for joining me today I would like to come on and speak to you guys and give you some encouragement on how to love one another how do Christians love one another how do we do that Jesus commanded us to love one another as he loves us he said in John 13 34 a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you you also are to love one another. Loving others is obviously a big deal. It's one of the greatest commandments and it's at the core of Christianity. But how do we do it? How exactly can we accomplish it? I've been reading my devotional and um, blog words of faith hope and love and dot com and there is a wealth of information in the bible that god has left for us thankfully that it does not make it a mystery to us so i would like to share some of this information with you guys because it's helping me and whatever helps me i do want to make sure and i pray that it will help you Thankfully, God did not make it a mystery or a guesswork on how we are to love one another. Jesus spoke of love in the same way when he said in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So, to express biblical love is to do what God has commanded. Now, when the Apostle John exhorted his readers to love, he linked that directly to what God commands. Genuine Christian love involves more than warm feelings and affectionate hugs and tender affection. While love may very well include emotions and stir our feelings, the love that the Bible calls us to is first and foremost an act of the will. The world may tell us that love means affirming and admiring, but the scriptures do not. In fact, love means obeying our Creator's commands. Perhaps heeding God's commands will sometimes require us to give a hug or to give encouragement, to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. As Romans 12, 15 states, but at other times, genuine Christian love may call for correction, admonition, rebuke even, or exhortation. One key to understanding this love is to consider the manner in which Jesus called his followers to love one another. John 15, 12. This is my commandment, he said, that you love one another as I have loved you. Then he added in verse 13, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. The call to love then is ultimately a call for us to give just as Jesus gave. It is a call for us to resolve, no matter what, to seek the good of others, even when that pursuit comes at great risk or cost to ourselves. We know that Jesus endured the cross. Hebrews 12, 2 
states, for the joy that was set before him. That joy, however, was not immediate. We need only to look to Gethsemane, our Christ's cry of forsaken anguish from the cross for evidence of that. Likewise, there is an eternal joy set before us, and we need not doubt that every act of costly love will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Luke 14, 14 promises that. But for now, to love well will often take a toll on us. It will require us to press on with loving someone when we don't necessarily feel like it. It will demand that we give when we just don't have any more to give. 1 John 4.19 says, We love because he first loved us. Not only is Christ our example, but by his Spirit, he will empower us to walk with him on the sacrificial path of love. So, we should ask ourselves, whom the Lord has given us to love today? Is it those in our families, in our church, in our community? Are there those that are around us that are difficult to love? Well, we are to do what God commands and we are called to walk in his word each and every day. Here is a prayer that I've most likely shared before that I like to pray when I'm having a difficult time. Lord, help me to love my husband and my children and whomever else you place on my heart with a genuine affection. Help me to experience your love and then to love others with that same unconditional love. You are under his wings. Take hope, dear believer, and live in the comfort of this. You still have a protector and a provider in Christ. And you have one who will never fade away. And who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And dear sinner today, I remind you that you are without any spiritual protection. Dear children, please listen. Remember those little baby chickens and that chicken hawk could swoop down with its sharp beak and sharp claws and eat one of those little chickens immediately. It had nowhere to hide unless it runs under its mother's wings. You have nowhere to hide except in Jesus Christ. And there you are. And imagine the wrath of God like a, a mighty hawk just above you, ready at any moment to swoop down and to devour you. You'll have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and you will be devoured forever in hell. But even now, even in sending this message to you, Jesus Christ calls to you. Just like he said in Matthew 23, Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered together your children as a mother hen gathers her chickens under her wings. Christ calls to you, trust in him now and come to him for refuge. Come under his wings. Oh sinner, sinner, Christ calls. Oh dear child, dear child. Dear loved one, dear loved one, I call you under my wings, Christ calls to you. Trust in him and find refuge, and you this day will rejoice with the psalmist in Psalm 63 who said, Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice.
Amen. Hi you guys and welcome. I am going to be preparing a beef brisket for my family. My husband loves brisket and we're going to do it in the slow cooker. And it is so simple. I have already rubbed my brisket with a dry rub and I usually let that sit overnight. I will leave the ingredients in the description box below, but we are about to do the barbecue sauce for the brisket, which will sit on the bottom of the crock pot. All you will need is a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, and a half a cup of ketchup. And you will need one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of onion powder, and three bay leaves, and also one teaspoon of mustard powder, but I am out, so I'm going to just substitute and see how it tastes. If I need a little bit of mustard, I'll add that. And you can, this is optional, add a fourth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes for taste, and I will show you the process. And I usually do this the night before um, Sunday so that by the morning it's done or you can just leave it to go because really it will be cooking on slow in the slow cooker for 12 hours. So this is something you can do ahead of time and not watch over it. It's very simple.
barbecue sauce a taste to see if you like the actual taste. We prefer a little bit of a spice, so we do add the cayenne into ours. And um, I think I want a little bit more of the tangy taste. So I'm going to be adding one more, one teaspoon of organic mustard. Since I don't have the mustard powder, you can use mustard also. So, and you can taste it for your liking if you prefer of a more of tangy taste or more of a sweet taste. You can adjust it yourselves to what you prefer. And to this, I'll be adding three bay leaves on the bottom, um, also with the sauce before I add the brisket. The mustard is combined and you're ready to add in your three bay leaves. And also your brisket. So here is the brisket. I did the dry rub last night and I just left it after I rubbed it in the fridge overnight. So you want to put the brisket into the slow cooker with the fatty side facing up. So this is the brisket, this is the meteor side. That's going down first. So the fat, see the fat on this brisket? The fat will be up. So here we have the brisket with the fat side up and this is exactly how we're going to cook it for the 12 hours and then it'll be done and we're going to cook it on low. And after that there's one more step that we will make. If you have any drippings from the spice rub that you had, make sure you top that off onto the brisket don't let that go to waste all the seasoning is definitely needed then we're going to cover it up and put it on low and let it cook for the 12 hours, you guys. Also, just a little tidbit. I have done this right before church one in the morning. I would put it on around six and let it cook on high for six hours. And that one came out fine also. So you can choose and do what you think is best for your time frame if you do not have the time for a 12 hour low and slow cook. Both tasted great. I prefer um, to do either or, it really doesn't matter to me, it just depends on time. Okay you guys, this brisket is done. I decided to cook it on high for six hours and I'm going to broil it in the oven for more color and I'm going to be broiling it in the oven for more color for like 10 minutes, seven to 10 minutes, wrapped in foil. And so I just wanted to let any of you know if you need to do this in a shorter time frame you don't have to 12 hours you can cook it on high if you have a large brisket for six to seven hours you can also cook it on low 
if you have a small brisket for up to um, six hours. So it all depends on the size. And so we're going to take this out and put it in the broiler for that time frame.